Hey, it's been a while, and it's been a while, it's been a while since I've been recording in the stew, and it's been a while, and it's been a while, it's been like a week and a half, maybe two weeks, I don't know what's going on, hey, what's up guys, it's Radio Ridley Radio, I'm your host, Michael Ridley, today's date, fucking July 18th, 6.16 p.m., Central Standard Time, in the semi-OK town of Austin, Texas. A little serious one, a little somber intro to this one, dude. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of sick of this place. I, I'm, I'm getting, I mean, I, I love the comedy. I'm going to tell you right now, I love doing stand-up here. And, um, you know, it, it would be spoiled of me to complain about that. But I think um, this place is a utter, uh, utter shithole. Uh, I think Austin, Texas is a third world fucking country. And everybody uh, everybody who's here would say, hey, then go back to wherever you came from. I'm going to tell you right now, um, where I'm from is worse, you know? So I feel like I, I know what's bad, you know? Uh, where I'm from, V to the A, Virginia, I mean, there's law and order. It's a, it's another one. It's another one of those where I, where I talk about law and order. I'm, I'm a little upset. But I'm also very impressed with what has uh, with my experience here in Austin. As far as um, this is a this is a like I said, this is a right wing. This is a right wing extremist podcast, and we're going to be giving a big, huge shout out to the Austin Police Department for something that happened to me recently, as of about probably 12 hours ago. But um, yeah, man, the culture. The culture in our society right now, as far as America, we are so, our, our culture is so deeply ingrained in rewarding criminality, we have no accountability. We have no accountability in our culture nowadays, and it's, uh, it's, it's incredibly frustrating. I had something happen to me. You, it, for those of you watching on YouTube, you might notice in my right eye, I got a little bit of a blood speck. Got a little bit of a, ooh, ooh, got a little, uh, got a little bit of a boo boo in me. Oh, ho. and um, I was parking my truck. I parked my truck on Sixth Street. <clears throat> that was a mistake. Don't ever park your fucking truck on Sixth Street, brother. Pro tip. I lived here for too long to be doing that shit. But I also kind of believe in the good faith of people. You know, I believe that. You know, uh, you would respect someone's property. You respect, you know, I would. I personally would respect people's property. I wouldn't, you know, make a muck or make a mess of anywhere I go, you know. If it ain't yours, don't fuck with it. If it ain't your shit, don't fuck with it. Respect people's property, especially here in, in, in Texas. There's this thing called, uh, what is it called, castle? Stand, stand your ground. Yeah, it's just, yeah, well, it's stand your ground and have castle doctrine. And castle doctrine extends extends to, you know, it's it's it it's a it ex it, it what am I trying to say here? It is an extension of stand your ground. So it's like castle doctrine is like you have the right to protect your home, your business, and your car property. And um, I will say this: Austin, being the liberal shithole it is, sometimes I'm extremely grateful that it really ain't that liberal. Everybody says it's just, this is the most liberal part in Texas, but I'm telling you right now, it's still motherfucking Texas. Man, I walked to my car last night, this fucking giant, fat, Arab piece of shit. He's a big, fat Arab dude. And he had a fucking tray of halal. He's on the fucking... Uh, <laughs> he's eating halal in the bed of my truck, like leaned over, leaning on my paint job. Leaning on my bedside, using my shit as a lunch table, bro. And I don't say shit to him. I just walk right up to his ass. I walked right up to his ass. I see the tray of food. I just, I just pick it up. I pick up his little halal tray. I don't say a word to him. I just hold the tray out to him. And I go, hey, bud. And as I'm doing that, this motherfucker takes his hands like this. For those of you uh, listening on Spotify, y'all listening to the podcast, he takes open hands like he, he, he holds his hands up. And mind you, he's got tzatziki sauce, whatever that spicy fucking halal Arab, those foreign <laughs> Arab spices, bro. <laughs> My man claws, he like does like one of, he does like a football, 
linemen push right into my face, scratching the tzatziki all up in my creases, dude. In my face, he shoves it in my eye. He, he gets under my eyelid. He pokes my eye from underneath like this. Ooh, this hurts to explain to you guys. Ooh, that hurts. He pushes his fingers into my fucking eyes. Some real, some real Arab fighting tactics. Some real sand people fighting tactics, if you ask me. The old, the old boink. That's some fucking Arab shit. <laughs> habibi, habibi, boink. That's a fucking, it's a black belt in sanjutsu. This motherfucker, dude. He stabs me in my fucking eyes with his finger. He pokes me in my fucking eyes, bro. Oh, my God. I'm assaulted immediately. <laughs> Don't grab a fat Arab's food. If you guys hear a slight hum, I want to apologize. Damn the it. studio is now in 70K in debt. Our AC machine has broken. This is quite a conundrum. I'll continue the story, but I want to I wanna hit a... Hit a little pause for you. There might be a slight, hmm. We have a rental AC unit, and that bitch is bussing, boy. That shit feels good as hell, but it also is at the cost of audio right now. So I'm sorry if you can hear that. But Papa... I don't think they can hear it. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. If you heard it, that's what's going on. 70K in debt. <laughs> We're Sub fucking... Subscribe to the brand new. You got to subscribe to the brand this new... This is an paid. ad. Yeah, this is actually an ad. Mid-ad. I got you. I hooked you in with the story. Now you're here. We're starting a Patreon, folks. Starting a Patreon. You asked. Yeah. We did a poll on YouTube, and they yeah. said to start one. Yeah. I put quick comedy on there, and they and it wasn't as one of the options, and nobody selected it. Nobody selected for me to quit comedy. So no. we got good fans, bro. Dude, yeah. The boys. I love, I love, I love my sweaty boys. Shout out to my sweaty boys. If you want to join the legion, the legion of sweat. <laughs> if you would like to join my army. Against the Arabs. <laughs> if you would like to join my army against the Arabs of 6th Street, join the Sweaty Legion only on Patreon. They damaged, they, they assaulted your king. They disrespected <laughs> the sanctity of what we've created. How dare thee lay thy hands upon your leader. Your sweaty king. The king of perspiration himself. <laughs> I'm the I'm the prince of all sweaty boys. How dare thee place your tzatziki sourced fingers upon my face? How dare thee? The prince of perspiration. So yeah. Yeah. So uh so yes, uh you head on over. We're starting a Patreon. First 20 subscribers get a free uh, Michael Ridley t-shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah. But that's that's the... Uh, it's the, the top tier. The top tier. Yeah, top first tier. first 20 top tiers, you're getting a fucking Michael Ridley t-shirt with a signed little note from your boy. Frame that shit. And I'll, I'll extend it even further. When I'm selling out theaters, you send me a DM. You, you email us. You email Taylor or whatever. You find a way. You, you, you figure it out. You bring that note, you get them good tickets, dog. You get them F and Fs. You get them F, them F and F Ticarinos. You get that Familia y Amigos. You get that family and friends, dog. For supporting me in such humble beginnings. I'll make that promise to you. If you stuck it with me when I ain't shit, you saw... You saw the vision, you saw the talent, you enjoyed what I create, bro. You will be able to join me in my round table. My table of nights. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this guy shoves his fingers into my fucking face, bro. Scratches my face up. Pokes me in my eye almost immediately. Now, mind you, my hands are still full with the food. <sighs> Spoiler alert, this guy doesn't know that I've been going to fucking 10th motherfucking planet. Shout out Eddie Bravo. Shout out to the boys at the mother ship. They've been teaching, they've been teaching the young Ridley the ones and the twos when they come to the Jews and the Jitsus. Me know how to bob and weave. Me know how to control the body of another man. <laughs> me hit the big boy with the double underhook. 
Yeah, I pulled some fucking, I had some shit up my fucking sleeve. And I was wearing short sleeves that day, too. I was wearing short sleeves yesterday. I still pulled some shit up from my sleeve. Brother, he activated my motherfucking trap card, you dummy. He saw this big fat Arab boy saw me yanking on his goddamn halal. He saw me grabbing his halal. He was like, this guy's pulling a prank on me. There's no way that this could be his truck. And I'm fucking blatantly disrespecting his property, getting tzatziki sauce all over his $4,000 paint job. How, how dare this guy? The audacity of this motherfucker to yank my food from this perfectly good uh, lunch table that I found. This perfectly good fucking $4,000 paint job lunch table. This guy's an asshole. Shoves his fingers in my fucking eyes, bro. Now, at this point, we have a little bit of a hand fight. We got a little bit of this going on, a, a, a standing tussle. We're in a standing tussle. And um, at this point, I feel another challenger has entered the arena. A 72-year-old halal cart employee is now pulling on the back of my shirt while I'm trying to subdue this man who just assaulted my fucking face. This is crazy, bro. <laughs> this is crazy. Imagine you're getting attacked, and then a random NPC appears to assist your attacker under the guise that they are just. But nay, brothers, nay. They were unjust. And the truth set me free. I was righteous in my acts because I walk with the Lord. And the Lord tells you, Exodus 14, 14. We're going to quote the Bible for this part of the story. Exodus 14, 14. Look it up. I'm not looking it up. I'm kidding. I'm looking it up. Exodus 14, 14. Fuck you, Google. I was righteous. I was righteous. Exodus 14, 14. <laughs> you weren't supposed to see that. Yet. You guys weren't supposed to see that yet. That was a, here we go. Exodus 14, 14 says, The Lord will fight for you, and you will only have to be silent. I didn't raise no voice. I didn't fucking, I wasn't yapping, brother. I just surrendered to the fucking moment. This goddamn 72-year-old halal cart NPC fucking yanking on my shoulders. I lose my balance. Now me and big boy are on the ground. Trap card activated. <laughs> Trap card activated. I play Pot of Greed. I draw three quick moves from my deck and shove them up your ass. <laughs> and then I play another Pot of Greed. Bro, I hit him with the double underhooks. I get this. I get both of my arms under this boy's shoulders, and we're on the ground, and we're horizontal. We're laying next to each other like we're in bed, and we're on the dirty ass Sixth Street floor with all the dried horse shit grass. We're <laughs> we're rolling around in fucking hay, poop and hay. It's a real. It's a real fucking. It's one of the. It's like that moment in every BT movie where they freeze frame and they're like, you might be wondering how I ended up getting here. Well, let's run it all the way back type shit. It's one of those, you might be wondering how your boy got here. Well, we're going to have to run this shit back to earlier this afternoon. No, dude. We're laying horizontal side by side on the ground. We're on the ground like this. We're on the ground like this. And I'm fucking tzatziki sauce in my eyes burning. <laughs> Mind you, there's still tzatziki all up in my fucking slits, bro. So your boy's already nerfed. I got the fucking visual debuff. I'm like, oh, fuck. Jesus, jumping Jehoshaphat, dude. I'm fighting this giant Arab golem. <laughs> I'm fighting this. <laughs> I fucking roll for a critical, dude. 20. <laughs> I extend my legs. <laughs> I extend my legs while I'm holding his both double underhooks. His shoulders are up here. His head's right here. I extend my legs. I do like an arch. <laughs> I do an arch. I raise his shoulders. This motherfucker is so drunk that as I extend my legs and do the arching motion, 
his head just perfectly goes <laughs> perfect bro perfect critical hit we rolled for the critical we successfully dude my boys my brothers sweaty legion i'm gonna tell you right now i've never heard somebody's head hit the pavement that hard in my entire life bro it made me sick as when it happened guilt but pleasure <laughs> great great god fearing pleasure i felt jesus christ i felt i felt the son the father the holy ghost all in one the holy trinity i just felt i felt I felt like uh, I felt like Link when the Triforce was completed. I felt like Mario with his hat. I felt like Super Saiyan Sonic in this moment, dude. I felt like SSJ3 Goku. No, scratch that. Go tanks. Bro, when I scooped this motherfucker up and my... Like I said, Ultra Instinct, just pure survival, surrendering, not overthinking, not shaking, breathing normal... Properly using, properly learning how to tr channel my adrenaline, bro. I arched my fucking, I, I fucking press down on my legs. I lift up, conk his fucking head on the fucking concrete. Clean, dog. Clean. And then some more shit happens. I don't know what's going on. We end up back up on our feet. This boy has a softball attached to his forehead at this point. There's blood leaking all down his fucking face. And, um, I got poked in the eye. Owie, you gave me a boo-boo in my eyeball. But I made you bleed from your fucking skull, widowy. I widowy smited your bitch ass. <laughs> and you fucking, you tried me. You woke me off as a widow bitch. Big boy, big fat Ella boy. Big fat boombalat motherfucker, dude. I fucking smited your ass, bitch! <laughs> you trying to write me off? You trying to write me off as a motherfucking pussy? You trying to write me off as a little bitch ass boy, motherfucker? I smited your ass, cuh. <laughs> he works on 6th Street, too. That's the funniest part. I'm down there every goddamn night. Pull up, bitch. I don't know where he works, but I will be on the lookout for a dumb, frumpy-ass, fat Arab boy with a giant Fiji apple attached to his fucking head. <laughs> my man looked like... My man looked like he got uh, stung by a bee in a cartoon type shit. My boy, my boy had the goddamn Looney Tunes bump on his shit. <laughs> boom. Bang. Boom. Type of shit that'll push your hat up. <laughs> Cartoony ass bump How the fuck you get beat up by the Cutest, sweetest fucking guy in Austin, Texas, bro Ask anyone in this fucking town Michael Ridley, how is he? Oh, dude, he's nice, super chill Guy's super funny, love that guy Dude's great Wouldn't hurt a fucking fly Wouldn't hurt a fucking fly Unless he had to I spent a lot of my life being fearful, man. I spent a lot of my life... I spent a lot of my life being afraid of defending myself, man. I spent a lot of my life getting bullied. A lot of my life getting beat up. A lot of my life... A lot of abuse in my life, bro. And, um... I used to be terrified. You know, I'm, I'm still... St uh, this is not me bragging like I can just beat anyone's fucking ass. Okay, very rare W for your boy. Most of my life, man, when it came to street fights... and Nobody wants to be in a street fight. Everybody knows what the fuck that feels like. That's what a street fight sounds and feels like. <laughs> just two dudes in the street, just fucking primal shit. Terrifying. But nah, man, I was calm. Wasn't shaking, breathing, 
shit. Taylor saw me afterwards. He was like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> I was yeah, laughing. That is, that is I was laughing. You, you were like, dude, you were like, what the fuck? I was like, nah, bro. We handled it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. I was like, like fucking doing this number. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? My shirt's all fucking reamed out. Did you see my shirt was all reamed? No, you were wearing a different oh, shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. You I got a new shirt. shirt. So, yeah. Fight ends. Um, I go to get in my car because I, I originally came to my truck to move it to a, the front of Mothership. I just wanted to park it out front of Mothership. I wanted to leave Vulcan because Vulcan was closing. I was like, all right, there's nobody there. I need to move it to where I can keep an eye on it type shit. Because I was about to leave downtown anyways. And I go, you know what? At that point, I'm in my car, like, making sure everything's all straight, you know, put my hat back on, everything's fine. Like, you know, reconfigure because I got disheveled. I got fucking disheveled. <laughs> tzatziki poke. I got, tz- I got the fucking Arab tzatziki poke. <laughs> Failed. Did not work. Try again. Pussy boy. Everyone's screaming for the cops now. Everyone's, everyone. There's the, the bar Mala, Mala Fama or whatever. The fucking Mexican bar with all the... It's at the corner... It's at the corner of Neches and Sixth, and there's a bunch of, uh, you go in there, there's a bunch of neon, uh, you go in there, there's a bunch of neon fucking dicks on the wall. It's like a Mexican date joint. <laughs> All right, bro, she's asleep. Let's take her home. <laughs> Type bar. Just an Edgar bar. If you hear that, there's there's Mexican dudes in there raping chicks. That's the sound of Mexican chicks getting raped by Edgar's. That's the that's just the universal sound of Mexican date. It's one of those bars, and they got their swing doors open, and apparently all these guys are his boys. There's a bunch of guys at the, at the on the patio swing doors, and they're like, yeah, bro, you're fucked, bro. We work with him. We know him, bro. You're fucked. The cops are coming. You're fucked. Everybody's walking by. Bro, you're about to get locked up because they see that I won the fight, and they are shaming me, and they're trying to convince me into guilt. Like, they're trying to, they're trying to trick me. They're trying to gaslight me into believing that I was not just in my actions, bro, and that's what I'm talking about with this fucking world. They praise criminality, dude. They were rooting for the fucking villain, bro. And they were trying to convince me I was the villain, but I was the hero the whole time. I was a hero for myself. I I made my own fucking luck. I stuck up for myself, and I protected myself, and I defended myself. How dare you? How dare, how dare I fuck? I should have just let him fuck my truck up and then proceed to whoop my ass. Oh, my goodness. I should have just laid there, and I should have just let them... I should have just spread my fucking cheeks open for him, dude. I should have had a bottle of KY ready. You're fucked, bro. The cops are coming, bro. You're going to jail, bro. You're fucked. You're fucked. I'm like, no, I'm not. He hit me first. You guys are fucking idiots. I'm calm. Nope. He hit me first. Cops show up. I pop my tailgate. I I sit right in my fucking truck's tailgate. Bro, they got the whole ambulance. An ambulance pulls up. They're fucking, they're like, are you, do you need any assistance? They're all talking to me like I'm the one that got fucked up. Do you need any assistance? I'm like, no. Maybe a, a wet rag. He scratched tzatziki sauce in my face. <laughs> I'm tzatziked up right now. <laughs> I'm geeked and tzatziked. So they give me like zero water and it's like a pure water mm. and some fucking gauze and I fucking wipe my face off. And they're like, do you need anything else? And they're like, no, you're good. Cops like flash a flashlight in my eye. They're like, can you look to the right without turning your head? And I hit him with one of those. And he goes, yeah, he poked you in the fucking eye. I go, yeah, I know. There's tzatziki sauce in it. <laughs> <laughs> there's also, yeah, there's also spicy hot sauce in my eyes. My man fucking, my man hit me with the. Meow mace. He went meow <laughs> with the mace. He like he did like a kitty cat scratch slash mace attack. <laughs> but he was not ready for the fucking what? level 36 ma- machamp seismic toss. <laughs> he wasn't ready for the fucking third evolution form of machop. Seismic toss. One of the best moves in Pokemon. I've been using it since 97. Hit him with the seismic toss. <laughs> It, it, 
not to derail you. It is funny that he chose that move when you Ew. when you were you had the tray in your hand. You were totally vulnerable. He could yep. he could have done anything in he, the world. He, he could have just taken it from me. He could have slapped it in my face. But mind you, he's a fat boy and he's drunk and he's at work. <laughs> he wants to eat that. He wants to eat that. He's. A, <laughs> I took my man's dinner out of his mouth. And I smashed his head into the concrete, bro. I hit him with the double disrespect. Double disrespect. I wonder if he had to go back double to work. Double kill. Of course he had to go back to work. And they'd be like, what happened to you? I got my ass beat by a little Asian lesbian. <laughs> I got my ass beat by a Chinese guy with a mullet. <laughs> Tell that one to your fucking kids on Christmas morning, you fucking fat bitch. Or whatever you fucking Arabs celebrate. This is a very uh, Islamophobic set. <laughs> very Islamophobic podcast. Maybe this is the Patreon. No, it's not. This is going on YouTube. Free Palestine. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck's going on over there, dude. <laughs> I mean, people always say, Are, uh, Israel or Palestine? I don't know. It sounds like sand people problems to me, dog. <laughs> Same shit that's been going on for the last 50 years. I don't know, dude. Figure it out. <laughs> Coming over here, scratching Asian people with tzatziki sauce. <laughs> Take that shit back to Gaza. Take your fucking tzatziki sauce ass back. Take that shit back to the Gaza Strip, brother. Not Dirty Six, which, I mean, it's basically the same fucking thing. So I get it. Cobblestone streets. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, man. Cops, uh... Cops are, you know, they're, you know, they're looking at me. I give them my ID. I give them all my information. Sit back on my tailgate. We're chilling. Everyone's going, you're fucked. The peanut gallery's still going, you're fucked, bro. That's her boy, bro. Dude, you're fucked, bro. No, nah, dude, he fucked you up. Meanwhile, this guy's gushing blood from his head. All the EMS, all the fucking emergency service people are fucking... Bro, he has a whole squad of people, like, patching him up, like, he... Like ringside, <laughs> ringside. I was like, yeah, let me just wipe my eye. He's like getting the, getting the Gatorade squirted in his mouth. He's getting the fucking, he's getting the silicone, uh, he's, get, <laughs> he's getting the petroleum jelly wipes on his eyebrow type shit. He's fucking asking Adrian to cut him so he can see. I'm fucking, you have gum? <laughs> you got a baby like a, a cherry starburst? Baja Blast maybe? <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Can I get the whole can too? Okay, sick. Do you have any of those, uh, you know, those little cookies? I'm like fucking, <laughs> I'm in the airport, I'm, I'm on an airplane dealing with a fucking, <laughs> I'm on the airplane asking for the fucking, the cookies, the two-pack. The scoff. The Biscoff. Hey, can I get those, let me get two of them shits, actually. Let me get two packs of Biscoff, man. They fucking $300 fucking plane tickets, bro. We're going two hours up the street. I know you got another one. I know you got another Biscoff, bitch. <laughs> Bitch, let me get another Biscoff, bitch. <laughs> Bing, boom. Hey, keep them coming, bitch. Bing, boom. <laughs> Type shit. Cops asked me what happened. I go, man, I took his tray off my truck. I went to hand it to him. He fucking swiped me in my fucking eyes. I threw the fucking food down, start scrapping with him. I put him on the ground. I fucking stretched my legs out, and I arched his head and slammed his head into the fucking concrete. Meanwhile, I got fucking 73-year-old motherfucking Habibi back here trying to fucking help him out. I'm getting jumped by two Arab dudes, basically. And when the cops show up, the fucking halal cart guy, Oh, brother, he hurt me too. Brother, I look over my shoulder, this motherfucker's pointing. He hurt me too. He hurt him, and then he hurt me. There's guys, yeah, that guy fucked him up. That guy, every, all, everyone at the bar, that guy fucked him up. He's the aggressor. He started it. He started it. They're all pointing at me saying I started this shit. Sit back on the tailgate. I tell them that everything's going on, all this shit, all these people, hearsay, hearsay, hearsay. I tell the cop, I go, well, everything they're saying is hearsay, but the reality of the situation is, is that he striked me first. He scratched me in my fucking face. We took it to the ground. I smashed his head in the fucking concrete. If you guys want to run the security footage back, let me know when I'm ready to leave. I go, officer, just let me know when I, when I can go because I was defending myself. And he goes, all right, sit tight, Mr. Ridley. About five, seven minutes go by. I don't know who the fuck they had on the other end of the fucking horn, but that guy was like, <laughs> enhance, 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 enhance. Zoom, uh, computer, let me get an alternate angle. <laughs> computer, let me get... um. Save that shit. I'm putting it on my TikTok. I have an alternate TikTok. It's called Austin Street Fights. 
There's a sick ass Austin Street Fights YouTube channel. That would have been a great video. Computer, enhance. They run the footage back. They go, yeah, Mr. Ridley, um, you're good to go. And I go, you ran the footage? And he goes, yeah. I was like, what happened? Cobb goes, he scratched you in the face, and, and then you did what you did to him. <laughs> 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 he scratched you in the face. Bro, he totally put to Zeke all up in your eyelids. <laughs> Cop was mad chill. Bro, so like, dude. First off, congrats, bro. Sick. <laughs> Fucking dank, dude. Amazing, bro. Sick, dude. Eddie Bravo, dude. 10th Planet, dude. Let's go. Fuck yeah, dude. Jiu-Jitsu's paying off, my boy. Sick, dude. Give me a hug, dude. <laughs> Scruffed my hair a little bit. Let Good you, job, bro. Let you touch his gun. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, man. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much, dude. <laughs> Gave his gun back. Took me in a ride in the patrol car. Let me sit in his lap while I, and let me steer the car. It was so fucking sick, dude. Gave you a sticker. He gave me a sticker. It was like a little, like, badge. <laughs> it was so fucking sick, bro. Yeah, I get, a, I get a ride along next week. It's scheduled next week. So fucking sick, dude. APD rules, bro. When you're not a drunk fucking idiot, they're actually, like, everybody shits on Austin Police Department. Bro, they got defunded. They're doing the best they fucking can. They're wrangling a bunch of drunk fucking children that praise criminality and uh, refute truth. Thank fucking God we live in America and we don't live in some shithole country that's dick. your future is dictated by the hearsay of dumbass, drunk, evil motherfuckers. Thank God that we have technology. Thank God that we have the fucking American justice system that has proper, they have proper procedures on finding the truth and, ex and assessing what the fuck is, uh, what the fuck actually happens. I give Austin Police Department an A for their swift and uh, <laughs> professional conduction of the incident. I give the fat Arab boy an F- minus for his immediate emotional attack on the young man who was just defending his property and who was totally in the right under Texas Castle Doctrine. Doctrine. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those uh, lawyer videos on YouTube shorts, but I fucking, dude, I watch those all goddamn day long, dude. I'm, I stay educating myself with shit that may or may not be true for me, my state legally. <laughs> I'm, a le I'm kind of a fucking expert, dude. I watch YouTube. I watch, I watch lawyer reacts at YouTube shorts, and now I'm a fucking in lead. Iowa. In Iowa, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, thank God we weren't. And I told this to Taylor and his girl after uh, we met up at Missy's or whatever. After all this went down, I was like, "Thank God we don't live in fucking some fucking super leftist town. I'd be going to fucking jail with a felony right now, dude." Yeah. Thank God I don't live in some fucking hyper liberal shithole where you, if you, if somebody comes into your house and starts raping your wife and you don't let them finish, you're going to fucking jail, buddy. <laughs> How dare you not let that man finish raping your wife? You're going to jail. Felony. For disrupting a fucking home invasion and rape. Fucking bizarro land. No, we live in goddamn Texas, the greatest fucking state in the U.S. motherfucking A, baby. Don't tread on me, bitch. No steppy on snake, bitch. Dude was stepping on my snake, dude. Hey. Hey, brother. Hey, brown feller, you big brown son of a bitch. You're stepping on my goddamn snake. Boosh! Critical hit. Headshot. Triple kill. Overkill. Go back to your country. Walk back to Mothership, take a fucking victory lap. All the security guys are like, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, Ridley. Because they've been training me, man. Take a jujitsu class, learn how to fucking defend yourself, bro. Take a fucking jujitsu class, bro. Learn, learn self-defense. Because I'm learning something about us as a society, bro. We are so deeply ingrained in surrender. We're so deeply ingrained in no self-preservation. I've told this story to some people and they were off-put by it. They're off-put by me protecting myself because they assume that because I won... I was the aggressor because it's so much so the opposite case. In this situation, too? Like yeah. This with the yeah, people are like, people were like, when I was telling them the story, they were like, no, this guy fucking hit me first. I tell them, like, no, this guy hit me first. The cops, they're like, what happened? Did you get charged? I'm like, no, the cops let me go. I was, I defended myself. They were yeah. so like, that was so foreign to them. They're like, what? Right. What? You didn't get charged? No, dude. 
I didn't get fucking charged. I think being involved in a fight means you're doing Going, something wrong. That, yeah, people think being in a fight means you're doing something wrong. No, you're doing something right, and that's protecting yourself. Yeah. Now, I'm not the kind of guy to walk around town and pick fights with people. I'm not this Billy badass motherfucker, but I do have heart. And that's what they try to take out of all of us. The federal government, the media, they've done so well at taking that heart out of you, bro. We used to be a country, bro. Hard times make strong men. Easy times make weak men, or whatever the fuck they say. And right now, it's easy times, weak men. And I'm going to tell you right now, boys, that shit's going to change very soon. And I'm grateful I'm 31 years old and I can't get fucking drafted. And it's a shame because I'm, I'm scared of who the fuck we're going to send. We're sending they and them to fight Russia. We're sending they and them to fight China. We're sending they and them to fight... The sand people from Star Wars. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Taylor has a couple of videos of, uh, we can, we can go to my story. Actually, go to Chinky Sweat on Instagram. We're going to look at my story. I made a bunch of memes about this guy that I fucking <laughs> got in a fight with, and I think some of them are really funny. And I want to share them with uh, the viewers of the podcast before they expire. So Taylor's pulling on my Instagram right now. Now would be a great time to plug the show. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Also, if you guys want to see me and Taylor... Go see Taylor's band, Bystander. They're releasing a bunch of sick-ass fucking music. I've been in the fucking house listening to it every day. Come see us live at the Hawthorne Lounge Next in week. Portland, Oregon. Next motherfucking week to all my friends in the fucking PM motherfucking W. To all my friends in the PN motherfucking W. All my viewers... All the homies, out of 100 of you, I think maybe two of you are from the PN Dubs, maybe. Come see us, man. Tickets are selling fast. It's going to be fun. There's only 100 tickets, you guys. Uh, a couple <sighs> Very weeks, small. Couple small weeks ago, we were like almost halfway sold out, so we we're probably getting close. Uh, the other bands are pushing it hard. Uh, also, <clears throat> I'll have uh, shirts. I'll have my stuff. Come say hi. We're going to be at uh, Hyenas in August. Hyenas. On uh, the 19th. It's not announced yet. Not announced yet, but we are working on, you know, other dates. Dallas homies, we will be in Dallas uh, later this summer. Later next month. Sweet. But yeah, you're going to see Bystander. You're going to see Chinky Sweat. You're going to see... Cold Hearts is the new band. Cold Hearts? Yeah. Oh, okay. They're not on the the flyer? No, this is an older flyer. When the Broken Burn. Yeah. The homies. It's going to be cool. It's going to be sick. Back to... Let's go back to the story. All right. This is me plugging the podcast. Hey, go back to that. Yeah, please consider subscribing. If you haven't, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We love you very, very much. Please. Thank you. If you're new here, welcome to Sweat Legion. I'm your king. <laughs> I'm the king of... I, I'm the prince of perspiration. All right. I can't pause this when we're, as we're... Oh, I can up here. Okay, cool. Yeah, you can. Okay, sweet. All right. Pause it. Look at that big old boy. <clears throat> Look at that big boy. This guy was like, the guy was pushing like 280, bro. Easy. 80, he had about 90 pounds on me, bro. I don't even understand. Like when they're drunk, bro, it's like when people are drunk, it's like they're easily manipulated physically. Like if he wasn't as drunk, and he was hungry too. Like the moment we got on the ground, he was gassed. He was exhausted. I could feel his fucking heart rate beating through his fucking chest. This dude was hungry. This guy was drunk. He was delirious. He was all emotional. I knew he was hungry because he admit he immediately hit me. The moment I took the food from him, <laughs> Tzatziki in the eyes, bro. Tzatziki in the eyes off rip, son. Dude hit the attack button off rip. I was like, bro, what the fuck? I was mad. I was shitty about it. But, dude, if there's a fat guy on the trunk of your car fucking using your shit as a table and you're trying to leave, you'd be pretty fucking pissed too. I don't think it's unreasonable to be like, yo, don't fucking, don't use my shit as a fucking table. Yeah, that's I don't a think crazy it's, move. I, you think crazy using somebody's move. car with your food is nuts? That is nuts. Eating on somebody's tr- somebody else's trunk or something would be the same, if you ha- didn't have a truck, yeah. it would be the same thing. Yeah, the equivalent, yeah, like for those of you that own a trunk, if you just like walked out of a building and a guy was like using your car as like a table or furniture, or dripping anyone's sauce on it. dripping sauce on it, sitting on your car, leaning on it, he's got a belt with, you know, they got the, everybody has those pants with those studded fucking designs on them and they're just leaning all on your shit. Or let's say your car is a little dusty and somebody's leaning on your car. Bro, 
at every time they move, they're scratching your shit up. I don't think you guys realize that. And I worked in the automotive. I worked in auto body for a long time. The shit is not cheap to fix. You're lucky if you can get the guy to buff it out. Everyone thinks, everyone, oh, you can buff it out. Oh, you can buff it out. Only to a certain extent, bro. If you get a deep-ass scratch, that's going to have to get sanded and repainted. If it's light scratches, yeah, you can buff it out. But guess what, dude? Getting shit buffed out is not fucking cheap either. That's like a $250 detail job, bro. Why do you care so much about your car? Dude, it's it's what I like. That's my sh- that's what I like. I'm American. I grew up in a world where our country, you got that fucking car, dude. You got in that car, you get on Route 66 and you get roadhead the whole fucking way. We just beat the Germans. <laughs> You buy a fucking house out of a Sears catalog, you beat the fuck out of your wife, and you drink a whiskey after work. Gah! America. That's the world I fucking grew up in. That's the, that's the version I was raised by a boomer redneck retard. <laughs> that world doesn't fucking exist anymore. We live in a fucking police state where dickheads can just step, in, step all over your shit, and God forbid you defend yourself, bro. Let's keep watching the story. <laughs> yeah, look at this guy. He's he's stating his case. He's he's trying to gaslight the cop with bullshit. You could all right, run this back and, and run it back. Click back and then run it. Watch well, yeah, stay right there. Look at this guy. Look at the way he talks. Look at him. Look. I gotta go try to freeze frame it. No, but like, but like, dude, I fucking, but like, that's what he was doing. But he was like, but like, he fucking, no, but I'm not. Bro, go fuck yourself, buddy. The police ran the security footage and I was in, I was indeed assault. Everyone at Malavita said they saw it. I was the aggressor. Guy at the whole all cart said I was the aggressor. This guy's a. Uh, this guy's a door guy on Sixth Street. So right, if you see him, not, let's not let's not let's not dox him. Let's not do that. You can. When you get bonked on your head because you want to poke Asian people in their eyes, <laughs> there's the there's a blood clot in my eye. Pussy shit. Big fat pussy. And then uh, yo, shout out to Elijah. Fucking Eli was like, yo, shout out to Cheeky Sweat for doing uh, a violence and self defense. Yeah, bro. Self-defense rules. Oh, yeah, there was a show. That got canceled. That's where I'm at tonight. They tried to paint me as a villain, but I was the hero the whole time, <laughs> brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally, me all... It's like trauma, though. It's like traumatic. For me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. That, that brother. Yeah, come on. Taylor, brother. It's not, it's not My cool. Life is... It's traumatic. I mean, My... it is cool. It, it's very, it was very traumatic to see all those people turn on me so quickly, mm-hmm. but I stayed faithful to God. I was like, God is going to take care of me in this moment because the reality is, is like this guy is fucking trying to convince everyone to turn him against me, which he, com- he successfully has. But the truth is in the footage, and the footage will be on the Patreon once I get it. I've already put a uh, uh, request in with the case number and all that. I top tier sure subscribers only. Top tier right. subscribers will get uh, the video. And you'll see the... Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, it gets pretty fucking dicey. That video gets fucking dicey. I smited him, and they're in, you know, we almost lost it. But again, God had my back. The boy was gassed. That was me. <laughs> that was an actual photo of when it happened. <laughs> that was me versus the giant Arab golem <laughs> and your fearless leader down below. Thinking to himself, I just need to bonk him on the head. <laughs> it was a good meme. But yeah, that's that's pretty much what the fuck happened. It was a fucking nightmare. Wait, one more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hit pause and I did the fucking iPhone uh, smart cutout. And I have a bunch of those on my phone now. It's my new Facebook. It's going to be my new wallpaper on my phone for <laughs> the next few weeks. Just working out, my just per- staring at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to print a bunch of pictures of that guy out and just deadlift until fucking four in the morning. <laughs> Go to the shooting range. I would go to the thing. shooting range and just fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank uh, God I don't own a gun, bro. Yeah. 
So many people DM me like, why'd you even do all that? I would have just shot his ass. <laughs> I was in fear He's of my life. He's lucky you didn't. He's, He's lucky, lucky I you're didn't. not anybody else. It's crazy because uh, after the shit was over, he kept going, bro, I'm from the north, bro. I used to play football. I'm from the north, bro. I'm going to fucking catch you, bro. I'm, I'm going to fuck you up. He was like, after I fucking conked him on his head, too, that's when he wanted to start talking. Yeah. He wanted to, he wanted to, he, he, he didn't, he wrote me off as like a defenseless little bitch. And then when he figured out that I kind of knew something on the low, which I'm not a fucking professional fighter by any means, but I have fucking uh, beginner's experience. I've taken six, you know something. I've taken six jujitsu classes and I've been doing immense hardcore cardio twice a week for an hour. More so than he's doing. I'm doing, yeah, I'm physically. I'm physically alpha compared to this dude. This guy is huge. He's fat. He got gassed almost immediately. When we went to the ground, he was just... Ugh. We went to the ground, and then I conked him on his head. He was like, done, done. And then the fucking Arab guy, the, the halal cart guy's pulling me again, and then the dude gets... The dude's pulling my shirt, and he's standing up. Now he's standing up while he's pulling on my shirt. And then he's just holding me by my shirt. And he's like, why would you do that, bro? Why would you do that? And he's like almost on the verge of tears. We're standing up now, and he's holding my shirt, and he's pulling my shirt, and... Ripping one of my new car hearts all the way down. Jesus. What an asshole. <sighs> Why would you do that, bro? You <laughs> snuck up behind me. You snuck up behind me, he kept saying. You snuck up behind me. And I was like, bro, what are you talking about? I took your food off my fucking truck and you shoved your fingers <laughs> in my eyes. You drunk dumbass. Shout out to Austin PD, man. They do great work. I understand why they need 4,000 cops down there every fucking night, bro. Tear gas, SWAT, all that shit. I could not imagine a riot, which I've seen it happen. I've seen many riots happen down 6th Street. That is terrifying, bro. Guess what? Our, you know, my wife's down there. My wife's down there now. It's incredible. She's surrounded by a bunch of security. Yeah, she is surrounded by everyone at Mothership, so good fucking luck. Oh, yeah, and me. Conk. Just kidding. I'm not a fucking fighter, bro. No. Yeah. I am not a fighter, bro. When have you ever seen me, like, I've never done shit like that. Yeah. I'm the fucking, You're, I'm a joy, I bring joy. Yeah. I'm a fucking funny guy. I'm a sweet boy. I'm a funny little guy. I'm a silly, goofy little guy, man. I'm not a fucking fighting Billy badass. I never have. Yeah. What's what's really, what, what I'm grateful for is that something worse didn't happen. Like, uh, if he would have, even if it was self-defense, it just would have been more bullshit to deal with if, if something, uh, like, he. it's a good thing he did have such a fat head <laughs> because he, and he took that hit. And didn't get knocked out, and something bad happened, or you know or yeah, I mean? somebody ran him over or something. Well, like, or if it just like killed him, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, could like like then you'd be in some real trouble. But, no, well, no, not, not trouble, but just just you. I would to have deal to go to stuff. court. You I would have to, have to deal with, with shit. Nah, because nah. yeah, what yeah, you would yeah, do yeah, is yeah. I, I was in fear of my life in that moment. Yeah. Because I, I was you. I was alone and I had two people attacking me. Yeah. And then I I was surrounded by people cheering for the people hurting me. You were basically Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle. <laughs> I had to, dude, it was like Overwatch. I had the 100% special meter and fucking. <laughs> Feel the power of a dragon. You hit R1 and R2. And yeah, R2 I fucking hit the, oh, yeah, yeah, I fucking hit all four trigger buttons at once. <laughs> It was like totally. And it's crazy because after that move, I had I still had energy. So I was like, dude, if we got back up, dude, I fucking, I'm taking a striking and a wrestling. I nice. I, I DM the boys. I was like, bro, when's the next striking? When's the next wrestling? Put me back in. No, I need to learn that stuff because I was like, which I mean, I got a nasty spinning back kick. I think that just comes from the factory. There are a few things I want to um, a few things I want to acknowledge after all this. Shout out to the uh, Asian evolutionary trait of small eyes. I feel like if I didn't, if I had big white Caucasian eyes, yeah, he definitely would have like poked my mandula oblongata for sure. He would have got into my brain. He would have been like, ha, ha, ha. scratch out. Uh, <laughs> he'd scratch out my middle name and the two middle numbers of my social out of my fucking head. <laughs> um, I want to give myself uh, some personal recognition for just. Kind of dealing with being bullied for a lot of my life and being fucked with for a lot of my life because I'm five foot nine, I'm 190 pounds, I'm Asian, and for most of my life I've just been kind of a smaller guy. And uh, this is the biggest I've ever been. 
And for most of my, and it's probably as big as I'm going to get, but I, I was a little guy for most of my life and I, I get, I would get picked on a lot. And I, I mean, I've been held down and beaten. I've been beaten by my parents. I've been beaten by, you know, bullies. I get kids in my neighborhood, just my whole fucking life. I've been getting stomped out, bro. And I made a decision that when I got married, I was like, I cannot be married to a woman if I can't defend myself and her. So I made a promise to myself. It's like, I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to take care of my body. I'm going to quit drinking. I'm going to learn how to defend myself. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep her safe. I'm going to keep myself safe. We live in a fucking major city now. And we, we're not from hunky-dory fucking Virginia where there's cops everywhere to come save you at any moment. Fucking Virginia's a police state, bro. You can't do anything. Within 16 hours, they've already caught the guy. It's crazy. It's fucking crazy. There's fucking cops everywhere in Virginia. You can't, even, you can't do shit in Virginia, bro. Not in Texas. It's a big state, and you have an underfunded police department. And if this happened anywhere else in Austin, we wouldn't be having... If this didn't happen on 6th Street, we'd probably be having a different conversation. We'd probably be recording this fucking episode from the hospital type shit. The police... Me handling it was good, but the police being able to come there and dis, de, defuse it... Yeah. <clears throat> and get his name on paper so that if anything happens to me later, there's a paper trail of this dude already fucking with me. Yeah. And I can still press charges if I want. I haven't, I haven't made up my mind completely yet. Yeah. But I just think for me, it's just not good for my time. I got a lot of shit going on right now. Yeah. Dealing with bullshit with my dad, comedy, maintaining my marriage, like doing the show. I don't have time to deal with this petty bullshit. Again, I took the food off my truck because I saw it as disrespect. I didn't see this motherfucker doubling down and poking me in my eyes and starting a street fight. I went, oh, this motherfucker. Dude. He poked me in my eyes. I audibly go, bro, you really fighting me right now? He goes, you snuck up on me. You snuck up on me. You fucking big pussy, bro. Big pussy. And then he, he, he wanted to talk it out when he was bleeding out of his head, but then immediately, like, once the cops started showing up, then he got all big and tough. And I was like, man, you are a fucking grade A baby back bitch, brother. That's baby back bitch material, bro. So, yeah. Um, he was on the ground getting all patched up, and they told me I was fine to go, and I just walked up to him. And I said, uh, hey, man, by the way, I'm not pressing charges. Have a good night, buddy. Pure class. Just walked out. Yeah. No shakes. No, oh, my God. Oh, I just got in a fight. None of that. Just yeah. solid, bro. Hell, yeah. But, yeah, guys, they tried to assassinate your president. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that happened, too. For Me real. and Trump having the week of our lives, bro. <laughs> With the eye, yeah, with the, with the ear. Screenshot. <laughs> Thumbnail. American flag. Yeah. Austin Police Department. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to assassinate your king. I'm grateful for you guys. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. Hit that like button. Hit the bell for notifications. We drop every Friday. This episode will be coming out tomorrow, um, July 19th. Again, come see us in Portland. Uh, I do want to take a second to just say how much I appreciate my life, how grateful I am for Taylor. Um, fucking shout out to my fucking amazing wife and all my good friends, everyone who books me on a show, everyone who thinks I'm funny, people who ride with me. I want to um, I want to thank Red Band and um, Tony Hinchcliffe and Kill Tony and all that shit. I'm grateful for the whole journey, bro. Sunset Strip, Creek in the Cave, Comedy Mothership, everybody that fucking books me, everybody that puts me on your stage, I appreciate it. Everybody who sees the value in me, everybody who knows, everybody who says that this show's underrated, everybody who says that I'm underrated, I fucking appreciate you and I love you dearly. For real. If you're a fan of the show and you live in Austin, come say hi. I'll give you a big hug. I'll give you a big old wet kiss on the dick. <laughs> I appreciate you guys, man. Also, do you like my shirt? I'm, I want to start wearing more color, bro. I, I yeah. would wear black so much. I wore black for so much, man. Uh, for so long. Always wore black, shitty clothes all the time. I, I, I want to wear colors. I feel you like should. colors are inviting. You should. I'm done hating myself, man. I've been hating myself for like two weeks, bro. And uh, I've been really mean to myself. I've been super rude and hurtful to myself, bro. And then God sent me this fat Arab golem to fight. <laughs> he goes, oh, you hate yourself? Here, let this guy beat you up. Oh, you don't hate yourself that much. 
Oh, it looks like you care about yourself deeply. Maybe you should be grateful. Maybe you should stop being so goddamn spoiled and be fucking thankful for where you're at and what you're doing. Stop being so goddamn self hate. I fucking, dude, my vibes were so bad yesterday. I materialized. I made that. I spoke that fight into existence. I quietly prayed for something like that. And I, I'm a firm believer in manifestation. I manifested that fucking altercation. Because your negative energy. My negative energy brewed. It brought me to, it attracted me to somebody with also, with equal negative energy, you know. And it, it put me in that situation. So from this point forward, boys, for the remainder of 2024 or, you know, till the end of this week, I'll probably you know, be right <laughs> back fucking to it. I'll be right back fucking to it. I've been battling my fucking demons. I want, dude, I want a fucking drink so goddamn bad. We're coming up. We're almost there, dude. What? Three more months and I'll be two years sober from alcohol. But fuck, bud. Fuck my damn dude. I want a good damn, I want a good damn old fashioned brother. I want whiskey. I want whiskey on my porch alone at two in the morning with deaf tones in my AirPods. No clothes on. My fucking little dick just out <laughs> in the humid Texas summer night air. Mosquitoes <laughs> sucking on the skin of my nutsack. A cigarette burning in between my knuckles because I've passed out in the H-E-B lawn chair I bought last summer <laughs> that's covered in fucking pollen because I haven't cleaned it. And I'm just raw-dogging that pollen all over my back and the sweat and the dirt on the chair is mixing into my skin. Your ass cheeks. My ass cheeks are all fucking... There's just fucking detritus all in my crack and there's fucking... Butthole stings because I didn't wipe my ass all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Just got this fucking spicy, dry, doo-doo asshole in them. And I wake up to the glass slipping out of my fingers and breaking on the ground. And, and it startles me. And I stand up and I cut my fucking toes open. And I walk into my apartment. I get blood all over the rug. And Chelsea comes out and she yells at me. And she tells me she's leaving me for the seventh time this week. Man, I miss being a fucking drunk. <laughs> I miss being a fucking drunk. I stay up all night, murmuring to myself, being jealous, being all bitter. I miss being a bitter fucking drunk, baby. I miss it. Talking about why not me? Why not me? Fuck that guy. He's not even funny. Yeah, I want that. I miss that guy. Be the bitter drunk 11-year comic not doing shit with his life. Yeah, give me that. Give me that guy again. Just in Virginia, just in my garage, staring at my Miata. I used to just get drunk, just stare at my fucking Miata. And <laughs> fucking brand new painted bumper, just fucking kick it and crack the fucking paint. Just punch the fucking hood, throw a fucking wrench at the windshield. Wake up the next morning like, who the fuck? <laughs> who did this in my car, dude? <laughs> Chelsea, someone came in here. Somebody broke in the garage and fucked the car up and drank all my whiskey. Go fucking walk in my house, get my car keys, open the garage, turn me on, on, go find a fucking parking lot and just redline that motherfucker until the motor shoots through the hood, dude. Burn tires up. Come home, car's in perfect condition. <laughs> Not a scratch on the motherfucker. Chelsea threatens to leave me for the eighth time this week. God, I miss being a drunk piece of fucking shit, dude. Some guy eat, eat food on some guy's car. He comes out. He's all pissed. He takes the food off the car. I fucking, I take my fingers. I just jab my fingers into his eyes, dude. I just jab my fucking fingers right into his fucking eyes. And then he picks me up and he throws me. He drops me on my fucking head. Now I'm bleeding. Then I try to convince the cops that I did nothing wrong. And then they fucking, they take me off to, they take me off to jail. I'm sitting here wondering why the fuck I got here. I still got that scratchy, itchy ass booty hole too. My booty hole's still all dry and covered in shit. <laughs> From the chair. From the chair. Yeah, I'm naked. I'm still naked. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't put clothes on this. I'm still just a naked guy this whole time. I'm just fucking dicks out, gut, man titties, and little ass dick and balls out. Just, just fucking lubricated from all the sweat and grease. Just. Thank you guys for listening to Radio Ridley Radio. Again, please, if, you are, uh, if you're new here, consider subscribing. Comment. Um, guys, if you want to help out the podcast, you're a fan of the show, if you found something super fucking funny, you think we should make it real, put a timestamp in there. YouTube lets you put it. Just do, you know, what time with the semicolon, boom, 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 put it in there. 
Yeah. Boom. Help us out. We could, we'll make the clips. We'll crank it out. I'm trying to help us blow up, bro. Help us because we're just going to, we need. I don't want to do anything else. I, here's the thing. I don't want to do anything else either. I want to do stand up. I want to do this. And then I want to go around the world and meet everybody. I watch every episode. I crank out all the timestamps. We are going to lock in. We're going to release a bunch of shit. Hopefully, you can get some more traffic, some more folks. But again, like, comment, subscribe. Tell your fucking friends. Please share the shit. Notification bell. Every Friday. I don't know exactly what time, but every Friday. I'm trying different times, see what's best. Probably two. We're, we're going to start doing clickbait titles. Uh, I know times are hard. 70K in debt. <laughs> the studio, me and Taylor talked about it. We're going to go, you know, Asian guy gets absolutely destroyed on 6th Street. It's going to be the yeah. name of this one. Asian yeah. guy gets Asian guy gets beat up on 6th Street. Will yeah. be the name of this podcast. <laughs> Subscribe to the new Patreon. We're going to post uh, a episode that we filmed at 2 a.m. like a couple uh, I, like I, a month ago spoiler alert, i'm crying <laughs> it's, a trauma I, dump. I, it's a trauma dump you get to learn a lot of uh it, top tier patreon subscribers you will learn about the lore you'll learn about why i'm so fucked up but also so brilliant i go i, I delve in it was kind of a therapy session we delve in it's very funny it's so sad that it's funny i'll say that from what i remember yeah. taylor was in the booth like <laughs> My man was fucking melting. <laughs> Taylor's physically melting. I'm melting out of my eyes. I'm crying. Taylor's drunk. His booty hole's all crusty. He shit his pants <laughs> like three times what? during the... Yeah. I, Patreon subs will smell it through the screen. But yeah. This has been another episode of Radio Ridley Radio. Uh, I love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>